Hello kids, welcome back to the class. Today we are going to start chapter number 15 that is water life. So in the previous chapters you have learned the value of water. Now let's begin the next chapter. Let's revise. Color the water animals. Also write their names. Here you can see some animals. Color them beautifully and write their names. Now let's begin. Many plants and animals live in water. Plants which live in water are called aquatic plants, while animals which live in water are called aquatic animals. They have special features which help them to grow and survive in water. Let us learn more about them. Let's see aquatic plants. Aquatic plants give out oxygen and also act as food for some fish and wildlife. Aquatic plants are primary producers as they make their own food by photosynthesis. They have special features like leaves and stems which help them to survive in water. Aquatic plants can be classified into following types on the basis of how they grow. Pre-floating. Pre-floating aquatic plants are found floating on the surface of water. Their roots are not attached to the bottom of water body. They have air filled cavities which make them light and help them to float on water. Some examples of free floating aquatic plants are water hyacinth, water lettuce and duckweed. You can see in this picture free floating plants. Now fixed floating. Fixed floating aquatic plants have their roots attached to the bottom of the water body. Their leaves float on the surface of water. Such plants have a long hollow stem and broad leaves. The light and hollow stem help the leaves and flowers to float. Some examples of fixed floating plants are lotus and water lily. You can see the picture of lotus and water lily. Now let's see the fascinating fact. The leaves have stomata only on the upper side of their surface. Now next is submerged. Submerged plants grow completely underwater. Their roots are attached to the bottom of the water body. They have narrow leaves which have no stomata. They breathe through their body surface. They absorb carbon dioxide and thus help to clean water. Some examples of submerged plants are tape grass, hydrilla and velisneria. You can see in this picture, it is a submerged plant. Now aquatic animals. Aquatic animals live in water for most of their lives. Aquatic animals have special features which help them to survive in water. Let us learn about some of them. And also kids find out what are emergent plants. Next is aquatic mammals. Aquatic mammals give birth to their young ones. They have a streamlined body and fins which help them to swim. They come out to the water surface to breathe through their lungs. Some examples of aquatic mammals are dolphin, whale, seals etc. You can see the picture of dolphin. Now fish. Fish are vertebrae animals that is they have a backbone. Fish have gills which help them to extract oxygen from the water. Fish have a streamlined body which is covered by scales. Scales are often covered in a layer of slime to help them to move through water. You can see the photo of fish. Next is, next is crustaceans. Crustaceans are a group of aquatic animals that have a hard shell. Many of them feed on dead matter in the ocean. However, some of them are carnivores and hunt for their food. Some examples of crustaceans are crabs, prawns, lobster and shrimp. They breathe through their gills. Here you can see some examples of crustaceans. Now next is mollusk. Mollusks are intervertebrate animals. That is they do not have a backbone. They eat tiny plants and animals. Some examples of mollusks are octopus, snails, Slugs, squids and clams. You can see the example of mollusk. Now next is aquatic birds. Aquatic birds live in and around water. Some examples of aquatic birds are ducks, flamingos, cranes and pelicans. Ducks have webbed feet which help them to swim in water as well as walk on land. Ducks breathe through their lungs. Flamingos have long legs which help them to wade in water. Pelicans have long beaks which help them to find their food below water. Now, you can see in this picture duck and flamingo. Next is 
some other interesting aquatic animals. Alligators and crocodiles are reptiles. They live in ponds, rivers, lakes and swamps. They feed on birds, deer, mammals and have a tough outer skin. Jellyfish. Jellyfish are transparent and jelly-like animals. They emit light from their bodies. Their body is shaped like an umbrella. They have a large number of poisonous sting cells. Turtles are aquatic reptiles. They have a hard bony shell which helps to protect them. They live in water but come on land to lay their eggs. Next is sharks are marine predators. They have multiple rows of very sharp teeth. They have a very strong sense of smell. Corals. Corals are marine animals. They live in colonies called polyps and are attached to each other. You can see some reptiles and corals. Now next is amphibians. Some animals can live both on land and in water. They are called amphibians. Some examples of amphibians are toad, duck and salamander. All amphibians begin their life in water with gills and tails. As they grow older, they develop lungs and legs to survive on land. Here you can see alligator. Now next is fascinating fact. Amphibians are cold blooded animals that is their body temperature is same as air or water around them. They breathe through their lungs while on land and through their moist skin while in water. Now next is mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are small insects having six legs and wings. They have a pair of thin antenna. Mosquito breed in stagnant water and soft and moist soil. Female mosquitoes feed on plant nectar and human blood. To get blood, they pierce our skin with their proboscis and suck our blood. Female mosquito lays eggs in places having stagnant water. Bite of female mosquitoes can cause diseases like malaria, dengue and chikungunya. Here you can see a mosquito. Now malaria. Malaria is caused by the bite of a female anopheles mosquito. When a female mosquito bites a person having malaria, the parasite present in his blood infects the mosquito. When this infected mosquito bites a healthy person, a parasite in the infected mosquito is transferred to the blood of the healthy person and he gets malaria. Symptoms of malaria are a person suffering from malaria shows the following symptoms and those are sensation of cold with shivering, tiredness, fever, headache and vomiting, sweats followed by a return to normal temperature. Now prevention of malaria. Following steps can be taken to prevent malaria. Here are do not store trash like old tires, broken objects, empty cans or pots. Keep water tanks covered. Replace all stagnant water in flower pots, coolers and water tanks get at least once a week. Wear long sleeved clothes to protect yourself. Use mosquito nets if sleeping in open. Use window sheets and wire mesh on doors and windows to prevent mosquitoes from entering your house. Do not let water to stagnate in puddles around your house. Sprinkle kerosene on water if any puddles are there. Next is use mus repellents and creams at night to protect yourself from the bite of a mosquito. Now next is coronavirus disease. It is also called COVID-19. It is a very infectious disease. It is caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Most people infected with the disease experienced mild to moderate illness. They recover without needing any special treatment. However, some people become seriously ill and require hospitalization. Generally, older people and those who have underlying medical conditions like blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, respiratory disease or cancer develop serious illness. Anyone can get infected with COVID-19 and become seriously ill and can die. The virus can spread from an infected person's mouth or nose when they cough, sneeze, speak or breathe. Symptoms of COVID-19 Fever, difficulty in breathing, body ache, sore throat, loss of taste and smell, diarrhea, cough, fatigue, headache, running nose, runny nose and vomiting. Now let's see the prevention of COVID-19. We can follow some simple steps to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Some such steps are as follow. We should avoid going to crowded areas. We should wear a well-fitted mask while going one in public. We should wash our hands regularly with soaps and water 
or an alcohol based sanitizer we should maintain social distancing social distancing that is staying 1 meter apart from others we should get vaccinated when it is our turn hmm. we should cough or sneeze into a hand handkerchief or our elbow if a handkerchief is not available readily now next is we should become well informed about the disease and spread awareness among other people we should stay home and self isolate ourselves if we develop any symptom of covid-19 and get tested as soon as possible now kids also find out find out about the vaccines related to coronavirus that's all for today thank you class bye bye